everybody, it's Dr. Joe and Callie, and today we're going to show you the top 10 exercises for the rotator cuff. So let's get started. Disclaimer alert! Disclaimer alert! So these top 10 exercises are my favorite top 10. It's not any kind of research base, it's just the ones that I found work best for me and my patients. So the rotator cuff is those four main muscles, sits. So it's supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. However, there's a whole bunch of muscles that attach to the scapula, and it's like 20-ish muscles, so it's a lot. So when you think of strengthening the rotator cuff in general, you really are gonna be strengthening all those muscles because you want that shoulder blade, that scapula, to be working correctly. And that helps if you have an injury, it helps fix all those imbalances. So if there's one muscle that's messing it up, it can affect that whole shoulder blade. So some of these strengthening exercises might not be specifically for the rotator cuff, but it's really for those muscles that are all around it, which really affect it. So we're gonna start off with a pendulum exercise. This can sometimes be a stretch or an exercise. I like to add in holding onto a weight, which does make it an exercise. So it's really good to start off with the pendulums. It opens up that shoulder joint and it really just starts getting those muscles loosened up and relaxed and warmed up for the other exercises. So let's check that out. For pendulum circles with a weight, lean over on something sturdy like a chair or countertop. Put the weight in the hand that you want to exercise and just let it relax. Move your whole body in a circular motion. For pendulums front to back with a weight, lean over on something sturdy like a chair or countertop. Put the opposite leg forward and the closest one back. Put the weight in the hand you want to exercise and just let it relax and then shift front to back. For pendulum side to side with a weight, Lean over on something sturdy like a chair or a countertop. Put the weight in the hand that you want to exercise and just let it relax. Move your body side to side. So exercise number two is going to be an isometric internal rotation of the shoulder. So this starts getting that rotator cuff. These isometric exercises are when you're activating the muscle but you're not actually moving the muscle. And this is important because especially if you've had a surgery or a specific injury where you may be not supposed to be doing the whole movement, then this is a way to start strengthening the muscle without breaking the precautions or maybe you're allowed to do the movement but it's just too painful right now. So the isometrics is a great way to start off doing that. So let's see it for internal rotation. For shoulder internal rotation isometrics, put your elbow by your side at about a 90 degree angle. The motion you're going to be doing is this motion, but you're going to take your other hand and push into the hand. Number three. So now it's going to be an isometric external rotation. So same kind of concept with that isometric where you're activating the muscle, but you're not really moving it. So if you have those precautions or if you have a lot of pain with the movement, this is going to start help strengthening those muscles without really irritating them more. So let's take a look at that. For shoulder external rotation isometrics, put your elbow by your side with your arm bent to about 90 degrees. The motion you're going to be doing is going out this way, but you're going to take your other hand to block it. So you're pushing into your hand and then relaxing. Number four. Now we're going to move into shoulder internal rotation with a weight. So now you're going to start that movement. Now you're going to have the weight to get those muscles really strengthening throughout the movement versus that isometric where you were just doing it uh, to activate the muscles. So we're going to do this one kind of lying on our side. So let's check it out. 
For shoulder internal rotation and side lying with a weight, you can use a soup or vegetable can. The arm you're going to be moving is actually on the ground. Put your elbow close to your side and have your elbow at a 90 degree angle and then just bring it up and back down. Number five. So now you're going to do the shoulder external rotation with a weight. So same kind of concept as the internal rotation. You're going to be on your side. You're going to use a weight. It can just be a soup can or vegetable can. It doesn't actually have to be a weight. Um, so let's check that one out. For shoulder external rotation and side lying with a weight, you can use a soup or vegetable can. The arm you're going to be working is on top. Put your elbow right next to your side with your elbow bent at 90 degrees. Then with your arm parallel to the ground, bring it into your side and come back up. Number six. So this one's going to be a little bit of a series. It's a couple exercises in a row, but I like to just count them as one because it's a working kind of the same area, which is that upper thoracic back area, which again has a lot to do with all those muscles attached to the shoulder blade or that scapula. So these are going to be I's, T's, Y's, and W's. So let's check those out. Here are your I's, T's, W's, and Y's. For I's, you're going to lie on your stomach, put your arms straight out in front of you with your thumbs up, and then just lift your arms a little bit off the ground. For T's, you're going to lie on your stomach, put your arms straight out to the side with your thumbs up, and then just lift them a little bit off the ground. For W's, lie on your stomach, bend your elbows into a W position with your palms facing down, and then lift your arms up. For Y's, you're going to lie on your stomach, put your arms out at an angle in a Y position with your thumbs up, and then lift them up just a little off the ground. Number seven, one of my favorites, is the row. So when you do the rowing, you can use a resistive band, and this really helps not only open up the chest in the front, but strengthen those muscles in the back, and it helps get the rotator cuff area, helps get all those muscles around that scapula. So let's check it out. For seated rows with a resistive band, take the band, bending your knees up just a little bit, wrap it around your feet for an anchor, with your thumbs up and your elbows by your side, pull back and squeeze your shoulder blades. Number eight, bear hugs. Yes, it's exactly how it sounds. You're like going in to give somebody a bear hug. Using a resistive band for this is really great as well. It's kind of the opposite movement of the rows. So now you're strengthening those front muscles while you're stretching out the back muscles. So let's check that out. For bear hugs with a resistive band, take the band and wrap it around behind you. Keep your thumbs upwards and then come out and around, just like you're giving someone a bear hug. Number nine, serratus punches. So the serratus anterior muscle is the one that helps keep that shoulder blade close to the rib cage and the spine and the back. So when it's not working properly, that shoulder blade comes out into a winging, we call it a winged scapula. And that's really bad because that can cause a lot of dysfunction and that can cause a lot of pain in the rotator cuff area up in the shoulder. So let's check that one out. For serratus punches with the resistive band, 
take the band and wrap it around behind you. Hold the band up on top with your thumbs up and then straighten out your arms. Keep your elbows locked out and punch forward. So not bending those elbows, but bringing your shoulders forward. Number 10, bicep curls. Bicep curls, well yes, of course. Again, the bicep muscles aren't a part of the rotator cuff, but that long head of the bicep muscle, the bicep tendon, comes up in underneath that supraspinatus muscle. So it's really important to make sure you strengthen this as well because they sit so close together. If one's irritated, the other one might get irritated as well. So let's check that out. For standing bicep curls with a weight, keep your elbow by your side, turn your palm up, bring it up, and then slowly come back down. So there you have it. Those were your top 10 rotator cuff exercises. Did you like those? Yeah. Remember, those were my favorite, not necessarily any kind of scientific research to it. If you'd like to help support my channel, make sure and click on the link up here to find out how. And don't forget to subscribe by clicking down here. And remember, be safe, have fun, and I hope you feel better soon.